So hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free GCSE and A level maths videos and free tutoring even. Anyway, um, this video is about differentiation and I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that I use in the C4 module. Um, we're going to differentiate this first example implicitly which is really simple. You differentiate that normally so x squared becomes 2x and you almost differentiate that normally. You just bec That becomes 3y squared and you just basically anything with a y in it just becomes just to get dy by dx next to it. Okay, because we're differentiating with respect to x which means um, you differentiate that normally, but this one, this is not x, so you do that to it. So you differentiate normally, so 3 goes to the front, go 1 power down, becomes 3y squared, just stick a dy by dx next to it. Differentiate 2, becomes 0, and the whole point of this is to actually work out what dy by dx is, so you just rearrange, Six that 2x to the other side, you get 3y squared dy dx equals minus 2x, and then take the 3y squared underneath, and you get minus 2x over 3y squared is equal to dy by dx, and that's done. Let's show you a harder example. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to differentiate this. This is the product of two things, 4x and y squared. So, uh, you know, this differentiating implicitly is really like normal differentiation, really. Um, so, you got your product, 4x and y squared, which means you have to use a product rule, which means you do it like this. Uh, you do 4x times the differential of y squared plus the differential of 4x times y squared, which we've got here. 4x times the differential of y squared is 2y, because you bring the 2 forwards, you know, just like you normally do. And just whenever you differentiate the y, you stick a dy by dx next to it. So, so far we've got 4x times 2y dy dx, plus um, the differential of 4x, that's 4, times y squared which is just 4y squared. So all this stuff here is basically differentiating this bit and then y differentiated by with respect to x means you just do well y just becomes 1 yeah. Um, so just like if I differentiated x it become 1 wouldn't it? Yeah. So y becomes 1 but because it's y I have to stick a dy by dx next to it so it becomes 1 dy dx which is just dy dx okay um, and then this stuff on this side becomes 4y cubed when you differentiate it and again I have to stick a dy by dx next to it because it's a y okay the x gets away with it and neither do y by dx next to it but whenever you differentiate a y you can stick a dy by dx next to it anyway so how do I make dy by dx the subject of the formula because that's what we want again we want to work out what dy by dx is um, so all together I've got uh, 8xy dy dx here and another dy dx there so 8xy plus 1 dy dx there and 4y cubed dy dx on this side. So if I rearrange it and bring all the dy by dx stuff on this side um, and then factorize it, I get, and I move of course this 4y squared which has got no dy dx on it, move it on the other side so it goes minus 4y squared. Okay, what I get is I got 8xy dy dx and I got a 1 dy dx and that 4y cubed with its dy dx jumps on the other side becomes minus 4y cubed. Okay, so dy dx times blah blah equals minus 4y cubed. Take that all that massive bracket to the other side, it becomes a divide because that's dy dx times this, so it jumps to the other side, becomes a divide, and you get that. So dy dx equals minus 4y squared over 8xy plus 1 minus 4y cubed. Um, that's basically what dy dx is equal to. If you want to know exactly what it is at a certain point, obviously this is the gradient of a line, right? So if you want to know as specific point on the line what the gradient is, you just have to know both what x and y are, yeah? Because this depends on y and x in this case. Right. Um, this one, um, really what you just need to know is that the differential of a to the x is a to the x ln a. And what I'm just showing you here really is how to derive that, but really you just need to memorize that. Um, so, how do you derive it? Learn both sides. 
So you've got learn y equals learn a to the x, but according to log rules, you bring the x over to the front, so you get x learn a. So learn y equals x learn a. And then differentiate both sides implicitly, like we've been doing. So differential of learn something is, well, differential of y would be 1. So differential of learn y is 1 over y as it says there and this is x times a number learn a is just a number so differential of that should just be learn a yeah because if it was 5x and differentiate that you just get 5 so this is just a number basically um, so differenti differentiating this gives you this and then moving this y to the other side that's like a divide by y isn't it so it becomes a times by y so you get dy by dx equals y learn a and uh, y in the beginning we said was equal to a to the x so basically dy by dx is equal to a to the x ln a yeah replacing that y with the a to the x so that's the that's deriving the differential of a to the x which is that a to the x ln a okay um, of course what does that mean a could be any number and x is a power yeah it's not complicated right anyway um, What's this one about? Oh, this is about related um, differentials. Okay, um, so let's just go through a question. If you've got a sphere, it's got volume V, capital V, the big V, surface area S. Okay, and um, so did, we're just saying that. V stands for volume and S stands for the surface area, okay, uh, for this sphere. And dV by dt is, e as e is equal to 6, find ds by dt when r is equal to 3. So, what we know, we're normally actually told the formula for the volume or something of these shapes, unless it's something like a cube, something really obvious, then you should just figure it out yourself, yeah? But what you're supposed to do is take the object and um, um, create any differential equations you can. So with this, I've got the, the, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So if I do dv by dr, because r is your variable, um, 4 thirds pi is just a number isn't it, and v is your variable so you can do dv by dr which just becomes bring the 3 to the front and the power goes down to 2 so it becomes 3 times 4 thirds pi r squared and 3 times 4 thirds is just 4 so you just get 4 pi r squared okay and uh, in a similar way the surface area of a uh, sphere is 4 pi r squared differentiating that the 2 comes to the front becomes 8 pi r, and that's it. Um, so ds by dr is 8 pi r. Remember that r is a variable, s is a variable. Okay, so now we've got two things. We've got dv by dr is 4 pi r squared. You've got ds by dr is 8 pi r. And we you know that dv by dt equals 6. And the thing we want to know is what ds by dt is. So let's try to figure that out. Now, in this question, you just need to treat uh, these differentials as fractions. Okay, and fractions cancel out. So ds by dt is what we want. Um, and what do we basically have that has an S on the top um, and a T in the bottom? So, well, we've got a DS by... No, where have we got? We've got DS by DR, okay? Or even if we didn't have S on the top, we can easily make it on the top. Or we'll, I'll show you how that will work in a sec. So we've got DS by DR, okay? That's a starting point. And we want something with a T in the bottom. So what could have a t on the bottom? Oh, we were given dv by dt equals 6. So I'll write dv by dt on the bottom over there. Right. Now, the problem with that is I've got an unwanted dr on the bottom here and an unwanted dv on the top there. So somehow I need to cancel that out. I can actually have loads of different fractions or loads of different differentials in between. But in this case I've just got one that will do the job because if I get dr by dv that will cancel out the dr and the dv bit will cancel out the dv which will overall give me ds by dt. Yeah, because you'll be left with ds and by and by dt there. Okay, so um, yeah, so we know that. And do we have dr by dv? No, we don't. We have dv by dr, which is 4 pi r squared. And so as we're treating this like a fraction, dr by dv is just a flip of that. So uh, dr by dv is just 1 over 4 pi r squared. 
So, I hope I'm not making it sound too complicated. It's just really like fractions. You know what you want, and you collect the things that you do have. Okay, this is kind of default. You're usually told maybe not told to work this out but this is a typical thing to do whatever you can work out uh, as a differential you just work it out and you get all these differentials okay so you know what you want and you try to match it up so they all cancel out and you look for something that starts the right way ends the right way and some a couple of fractions in between maybe to cancel out the stuff you don't want Anyway, so ds by dr equals 8 pi r, uh, dr by dv is 1 over 4 pi r squared, dv by dt is 6, uh, multiplying all of that out you just get 12 over r, that's what it simplifies to. And we wanted to know what is ds by dt when r equals 3, so this 12 over r is equal to ds by dt, remember this is equal to this, which is equal to that, which is equal to that, okay? Now when r is equal to 3, that becomes 12 over 3 which is 4 ds by dt equals 4 and that's it really that is that is a very typical question now all these four examples are explaining different ways of creating differential equations or whatever um, so s increases at a rate proportional to s okay that's a very typical thing to say so when you say at a rate that means with respect to t i.e. ds by dt Okay, proportional means k, uh, proportion to s means ks, okay. Now if you're not sure about, pro you know, this proportional business, okay, just go to my GCSE video on sigmas.co.uk and uh, look for direct and inverse proportion and you'll really understand this properly. So direct proportion goes like this, ks and inverse proportion goes k over the variable. Okay, so we're oh we jumped to this one. Okay, let's jump to this one. V increases at a rate inversely proportional to V. Well, at a rate or you know at time t or whatever they say after. This is the basic stuff they say, yeah. But sometimes they add a few more words. But if you've got something going at a rate, that means with respect to t or a dt should be there. So V increases at a rate. Okay, you just write dv by dt immediately. Inversely proportional means k over the thing, which is v in this case. So dv by dt equals k over v. What's this one say? R decreases. Okay, so there's increasing, 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 but this one is inverse and this is direct proportion. Now, this is saying decreases at a constant rate of 8. Okay, so we don't even have, it's not proportional to anything, it's just 8. Okay, except for it's decreasing, say, right, minus. Yeah, so dr by dt equals minus 8. And finally, just to make it nice and complicated, we've got this example. V increases at a rate, so dv by dt increases at a rate proportional, so k times something, uh, to the difference between the area and the radius. So area minus radius is the difference between them, and it's proportional to that, and blah, blah, and that's it, really. Now, this thing continues into the integration video. Um, but this is getting too for this video, so I stuck it in the integration video because you can turn this stuff into integration. You'll see that in the next.